Hello everybody! Today we are going to take a quick look at The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. This is the sequel to The Hitman's Bodyguard, and will be followed up in 2024 with The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard's nephew's second cousin's former roommate. Probably. Directed by Patrick Hughes and starring Ryan Reynolds, Salma Hayek, and Samuel L. Jackson. And as the trailer points out, Morgan Freeman as you've never seen him before. We'll get to that. After the events of the last movie, Michael Bryce, played by Reynolds, whose bodyguard license is still in limbo, is taking a much-needed sabbatical. This does not last long, as Sonia Kincaid, played by Hayek, shows up out of the blue and begs Michael Bryce to help her rescue her husband Darius, played by Samuel L. Jackson, as he has somehow been kidnapped by the mob. After the rescue, the trio are inexplicably recruited by Interpol to go after a Greek tycoon named Aristotle Papadopoulos. Really. And they need to stop him from unleashing some sort of computer virus that will plunge the European Union into chaos. I mentioned last time that A Quiet Place Part 2 was the first movie I saw in theaters since the shutdown. This is the first early free screening I've seen since the shutdown. And you know, when I got the pass for this movie, I didn't even realize it was a sequel. I had completely forgotten The Hitman's Bodyguard even existed. I never saw it when it was out. But it was available for free through my cable provider, so I figured if it's not going to cost me anything, I might as well sit down and watch it. That got a sequel? I was honestly shocked by this. This movie was apparently a modest hit despite not being very good. In that way, it kind of reminds me of Now You See Me. Like, it wasn't very highly thought of, but it made money, so screw it. Might as well make another one. I got a few chuckles here and there, but overall, it's not very funny. It looked terrible. It's just washed out and overexposed. Lens flares everywhere. Even J.J. Abrams would tell them to tone it down. The action sequences were okay. Nothing really earth-shattering there, but they were at least competently done. I can only guess that it was the quality of the cast that largely carried this to a profit, and it did have a solid cast. Ryan Reynolds, Selma Hayek, Samuel L. Jackson, and the villain in the first movie was played by Gary Oldman, but it was just so mediocre, and I'm very glad I did not have to pay to see it. As for the sequel, I do think it was better, but the bar was already pretty low there. I did get more laughs out of this one than I did the first one, although none of them were particularly memorable, except for one moment where Morgan Freeman is revealed to be Ryan Reynolds' father, which confuses the hell out of Samuel L. Jackson for obvious reasons. They do explain he's actually his stepfather, but Darius stands there looking very confused for a few minutes before someone finally explains that to him. And this is where I have to call out the trailer, because they made a big point of saying this is Morgan Freeman as you've never seen him before. And apparently what that means is he's the stepfather to a white dude. Like, that's literally it. Apart from that, there is nothing different about this role than any other role he's had. Marketing bullshit. Much like the first movie, the action sequences are fine. Nothing particularly groundbreaking, but they're done well. I was a little surprised to see that in both movies, there is a scene where Ryan Reynolds gets ejected through a windshield and somehow comes out completely unscathed. I don't know how that turned into a running gag, but here we are. The acting was pretty good all around, which you would expect given the cast involved. In the first movie, Sama Hayek had a very small role, and this time she has a lot more to do. Granted, most of what she does is just cursing up a storm and shooting anything that moves, but still, it counts. She did look like she was having a lot of fun. I'm glad someone was. And you can actually see how Sonya and Darius ended up together. They are both violent as hell, vulgar as hell, and just madly, madly in love. In its own weird, twisted way, it's actually kind of charming. And this time around, our villain is played by Antonio Banderas, and he was fine, but it didn't sound to me like he was even trying to put on a different accent. The character is supposed to be Greek, and I will admit, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head what a Greek accent is supposed to sound like, but unless it sounds exactly like a Spanish accent, I think something is amiss here. But really, the biggest thing working against this movie is it's so stupid. The premise here is Interpol has hired an unlicensed bodyguard, that license is apparently very important in this movie's universe, a hitman, and his wife, and those last two have been in prison recently, 
and they are supposed to take down this huge criminal organization. I mean, the Suicide Squad, this ain't. And the movie does a half-assed job of even trying to rationalize this. And the reason all this happens is, early on in the movie, we see the European Union sanctioning Greece for reasons that are never really made clear, and Aristotle Papadopoulos vows revenge with his computer virus, like the half-assed Bond villain that he is, and to deploy this virus, he has to do so by connecting directly to some internet backbone in Europe, and the junction box is very secure and encased in tungsten carbide, and the only way to get through that is with a diamond, which the movie seems to think is not common knowledge. I always thought it was, but what do I know? So in order to get through this junction box, he has to hire some unscrupulous black market types to build him this super highly specialized drill, which is really just a drill bit with a bunch of diamonds glued on the outside. I mean, that's literally it. The movie acts like this is supposed to be some sort of super secret Bond villain type weapon, but it's not. It's just, it's a drill with a bunch of diamonds around the outside. That's all. I mean, I could understand if this was supposed to be a joke, but the movie plays this completely straight, and it just makes everyone involved look stupid. So overall, much like the first movie, I am glad I didn't have to pay money to see it. It certainly wasn't terrible, it had its moments, but it wasn't that good either. If for some reason you actually liked the first movie, you'll probably like this one too, I guess. Otherwise, I recommend doing what I did with the first movie and wait for cable. Whatever you do, despite what the marketing says, don't go see it in IMAX. I don't even know why they're advertising this as an IMAX movie. There was not one moment while I was sitting in the theater watching this thinking, you know what? This shot would look even better in IMAX. Like, I, I, I don't get the marketing there, apart from the fact that IMAX tickets are more expensive. But yeah, don't. And that's all I have to say about the hitman's wife's bodyguard. Till next time, take care.